Welcome back. It's 7.53. Now, over uh, 160,000 Ukrainians have fled to the UK under the government's visa scheme since the war began a year ago this week. They're finding safety in the home of strangers here. One of those people who've opened their doors to a Ukrainian family is you, Ed. Yep. Uh, not just you, of course, but nope. with your brilliant wife, Yvette, um, who welcomed a family in from Kiev last April. Mm. That's right, isn't it? Well, joining us this morning is that family, Katerina, her son, Glib, and daughter, Yeva. And coincidentally, their close friends from Ukraine ended up living just around the corner. And you can see there on the end mm. of the bench there, Yana, mum, hello, give us a little wave so we know who Yana is, <laughs> uh, along with Big Yeva. Big Yeva. There's Big Yeva and Little Yeva. There are. And Zahar. And there's a very special reason mm. uh, why the, it's so important right. that these two families are close. Welcome to the right. studio this morning. It's fantastic it to have you It wasn't coincidence, in. very carefully it planned. It was carefully planned, this. I'm going to talk to you in a moment. But let's hear from Yvette, shall we, who uh, is the Svengali behind this. She made it all happen. It made it all happen. Uh, you're in Thorock this morning, uh, Yvette, because you, you're, you're sort of working out with Keir Starmer this morning, but not working out physically, as in in the gym, I mean just working with him. But um, what... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Whatever. Semantics, yeah. Whatever. Um, now, yeah, that this... Was, that would be a stretch. <laughs> that would be a stretch, literally. Literally. Um, <laughs> tell us a bit about when this sort of light bulb moment happened for you, A, that you had the space in your home to do this, but B, there was more you could do uh, than just look after one family? Well, this was March of last year, and it was when everything was so difficult at the beginning of the war in Ukraine. And I'd actually been doing a Strictly fundraiser for Rob Burrow, the um, former Leeds Rhino player who comes from Castleford and who was fundraising for motor neuron disease, which he suffers from. And we... Was as part of that dancing, one of the dancers, um, Victoria, was from Ukraine. I spent a lot of time talking to her and she was telling me about all the families she was trying to help who were trying to leave Ukraine. And so we ended up with, with my office finding homes for, for several different families in, in across Yorkshire, including Katerina and Hlib and Yeva coming to stay with us, and then Yana and Yeva and Zahar just round the corner living with Fiona. And we were really keen to make sure they could stay close together so they could keep training. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, can I just ask you, of course, you know, lots of families have, have done this in the UK, a very generous country, but, um, you know, what have been the surprising things about having um, another family live in your home? Well, it, for us, it's been great having them living with us. It, it's awful, obviously, that they're separated from yeah. their own families and from their own homes. But it, for us, it's, it's lovely. And we've, I've been trying to learn Ukrainian words, hopeless, completely <laughs> hopeless. <laughs> the only thing I think I've learned is the word for Vereniki, which is really lovely. Yeah, they're laughing. Uh, we've Katrina eaten Indian lots of Ukrainian food. Out as much as I've learned. Yes. And we've had lots of great Ukrainian food, haven't we, Yvette? <laughs> we have. Yeah. And um, have you managed to stop Ed from continually dancing around the kitchen to these wonderful dancers that we have here? Sorry, Ed, I just have to ask it's you important, it, It's important to explain that the problem was yeah. that Little Yeva and Sahar are top international juvenile dancers. And because of the war, when they had to suddenly leave Kiev, they were separated, much harder to train. And they're now back in Castleford, training in their school, but also in our sitting room on Zoom. And um, so, finally, the partnership is back, uh, back together again, which is great. Um, thanks so much, uh, Yvette, for joining us this morning to sort of put the flesh on the bones of how this all came about. Let's talk to the families now. Yep. Um, Katrina, to you first, of course. Did you... When was the moment um, that you... And I'll ask Jana as well, decided that actually you do have to leave Ukraine? Because this morning we've been hearing from our... Uh, uh, our, our reports in, in Ukraine, there are family, children who are still living in those conditions and who haven't fled. So what was the turning point for you, Katrina, where you thought, I've got to leave with my children? Uh, no, at 21st of February, we, we woke up from explosions and uh, my husband said that we are, need to leave our town. Our town is situated near Kyiv near uh, hydroelectric station that's why we understood it's quite dangerous place and we decided to relocate to the eastern part of ukraine and then after several weeks we understood the situation became worse and worse 
And uh, we decided that we, three of us, we will leave the country. Leaving dad behind? Yeah. It seemed yeah. very difficult. Um, no, not easy, but we try to be, uh, to think about the best and to believe in our future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Jana, was it a very similar story for you and your yeah. family? Yeah. Yeah, there was just no choice, you, you had to leave. And Jana's husband has been serving in the last year down on the front line yeah. in the south. But, um... yeah. Yes, my husband is uh, military and uh, we are very proud uh, of him. Mm. And of course, uh, every time uh, we worry about him. Yeah. We're also very proud of, of, of Jana, though, because over the last year, she's learned English and she's now working as a nurse in a care home in Castleford, yeah. which is brilliant. And the children are all going to the local schools in Castleford, Castleford High and uh, to Hargis, the primary school. So we have to get, what's it like living with Ed? You can tell me the truth. Imagine he's not here. <laughs> tell me about his cooking, his jokes. What's he like? <laughs> It's nice to live with Ed. It's not because Ed is here. No. <laughs> and they would like to be polite. We play it's the really... piano together. Yeah, we? it's really very nice. And, and, me, and me and Big Ava have been playing the piano a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Zaha, I don't know how, what your English is like, but to you and Yeva, of course, how important is it that you've been able to keep dancing since you've left Ukraine? Um, it's... For, the, for us and for them, it's part of our life. And uh, for us, of course, it's very important to continue to practice yeah. because uh, all maybe famous uh, sportsmen say that talent is nothing. Yeah. Uh, it's really worth if you to be succeed in something, you need to work hardly. And that's, that's why we try to continue less. And you've been winning competitions and they all have. sorts as well. We've got a bit of a surprise for you because, um, of course, you are normally on Zoom doing your dance lessons, but your dance teacher um, is out in your cave, uh, Dmitry Volkov. He's been training the pair um, while living under constant threat of Russian forces there. Oh, he look can at join their smiles. Now, they're, they're <laughs> look here. at these smiles. Hi there, Dmitry. <laughs> we want to know, Dmitry, are oh. they working hard enough? Are they training hard enough? And can they be world champions over the next year? Is he there? Dimitri, can you hear us? Hello, hello, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm here, yeah. I was just asking, are the um, children, are, um, are Yeva and Zahar, are they, uh, are they training hard enough, do you think? Uh, uh, I so enjoy to hear you. I so enjoy to hear the uh, voice of uh, Katya and uh, Jana. Uh, and uh, I want to say thank you for this interview. Uh, this year is uh, so difficult for us, uh, but uh, children uh, uh, train well. But uh, generally we uh, seen only online uh, and uh, uh, children understand me well. Very good. And Dimitri, how important do you think it is for them here when they've left everything that they know behind, that dancing is the one thing, I suppose, that is, makes them feel like life can be normal? Uh, you know, uh, I feel uh, for many people uh, from Ukraine, dance... Uh, uh, People like uh, Zahar and Yeva. Uh, dance is very important because if you uh, will think uh, all time about the war, you can lose yourself. Uh, Zahar and Yeva, it's uh, one of the uh, biggest, uh, uh, one of the uh, beautiful couple of Ukraine, the world championship, uh, world champions, uh, sorry. And uh, before the first competition, uh, when they danced uh, in Blackpool, they practi uh, practiced uh, only outside in the garden, in their uh, building in the England. Uh, 
and uh, Eva can, uh, had uh, injured uh, her knees uh, because she danced uh, in sneakers uh, on yeah. asphalt. But uh, they continue wow. preparing uh, yeah. and uh, it's in wonderful. first competition they uh, took a final. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it, you've spoken like a true proud teacher Randy, and the smile on all your faces. I've been trying to pass on all my dancing experience all my all my and um do you think it's been helpful <laughs> you're very diplomatic very, the silence speaks volumes this but listen we've talked dark, about I'm this uh, all morning oh uh, we've heard a lot about zahar and uh, yeva's lovely dancing world-class dancing and world -class. we have got a very special treat for you right now you're about to see some world-class junior dancing or is it the rumba you're doing the rumba yeah. The rumba. Thank the rumba. you. Would you like to take to the Let's floor?